in this tutorial, what we're going to do is take a little look at making the next part so that we can actually complete a rather stylish little letter rack, toast holder, whatever you want to call it. So you might recall that previously we designed this shape here, which is about 100 millimeters wide, I think something like about 60 tall, and it's got this rather handsome 20 millimeter wide by 3 millimeter deep notch in the top. So we're going to build a part that will basically have one off just here and another one slotted in just here. It's going to be the same part twice uh, slotted in there to complete and build our model. So let's get stuck straight in. So in SOLIDWORKS I'm going to click on new again and I'm going to design uh, another new part. So I'll double click on there. The new part I'm going to build this time is just like before, it's going to be an extruded boss base. So I'll click over here. And my first part I built on the top plane because when it's finished it's sort of sat on the floor uh, and it comes up the way. With this particular part though, I'm going to build this one on the front plane because it's going to be a vertical part when it's finished. So I'll click there. So I've now got my, uh, my axis again, I'm ready to go. And I think for my upright what I'll go for is a uh, very similar look to the previous one. Uh, it's going to start by being constructed from one of these uh, corner rectangles. Make sure, just like before, that your first click, this is ever so important, that your first click is on that uh, origin point, on what we call the datum point, which is down here, see that orange dot? So I'm clicking on there, I'm holding the mouse button down, and I'm drawing up and out. And I think for this piece, I'm gonna make it about, uh, about 70 by 60, I should think, something like that. So about 60 wide, that would be a good number. Uh, and about, uh, in fact, let's go 60 by 50. It's the great thing about being a designer, you can decide what you want, 60 by 50. Uh, and I'm straight away going to grab my Smart Dimension tool, and I'm going to set the overall width to exactly 60 wide, and my overall height to exactly 50 millimeters tall, and I hit enter. So I'm now fully defined, so it's a very simple shape. What I need to do next is just auto zoom, that fit more nicely, that's good. What I need to do now is to build that little notch just here that eventually is going to allow me to slot all these parts together. So that's going to be another corner rectangle like this. Uh, and it's going to start on this line and it's going to sort of come out kind of like that. Um, there's, uh, in order to make this work, I'll need to sort of cut this line out just here because that way I get the shape that I want overall. So let's use our trim tool, just like we've done before, where it says trim entities up here. Let's make sure we've got trim to closest turned on. And then coming over here, I click once, twice. Okay, and now I've got the overall shape uh, for the outline of the piece that I want. We're underdefined again. The computer's not too sure about what all these different edges are. Look, that's why they're still blue. So we get hold of that smart dimension tool. Uh, this needs to be the same size as the hole in the base, please. Them to click together. So I suppose I could make that. I think I said 20, didn't I? So it's going to be 20 millimeters. Hit enter. Uh, this length just here. Well, if that's 60 and that's 20, and I want this to sit dead center, uh, I'll need this to be 20 as well. So let's set that to 20 millimeters. And because the computer knows that overall it's 60, and that that's 20 and that's 20, the only remaining distance. Uh, you know, that must be 20. So if I try and put a dimension in there, the computer's going to complain and say that I've tried to over-define my model. So if that happens, you ever see this, you just click on cancel or hit the escape key to back out. Uh, what else do I need to know? The computer's still not sure about this line. I'm going to guess it is not too sure how far down that line sits from my, uh, my origin point. So I need to give it this dimension here which is three millimeters, because we use three millimeter um, MDF sheets. Three millimeters. Okay, I'm back to being fully defined again. So let's now exit the sketch, because that's done. Let's say with this particular part, it's gonna be three millimeters thick. Again, we're using three millimeter material all the time. So I'll make that three millimeters. So it look, spin that around by clicking and holding down the middle mouse button. That's looking pretty good. And I'm gonna click on the green tick to finalize that part. So I've got a part here that would uh, hopefully all click beautifully together. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that look a little bit more handsome to look at. So I think, let's just get that front view back on, I think I might curve these edges off a little bit, maybe even chop a hole in here as well. So I need to modify the original sketch. We can do that by uh, right clicking on this part just here and choosing the option that says edit sketch. So now I'm in, and what I'm going to do is to, what are we going to do? We're going to curve these corners off, aren't we? So I'm going to use a filleted arc, like we used previously, the sketch fillet. 
and uh, 10 millimeters. That's gonna be quite a big curve. That's probably quite nice actually for this. Let's give that a try. So I'm gonna click on here once. That looks quite nice. And I'll click on here as well. I might make that a little bit larger actually. I'm gonna go up to 20 millimeters and see how that looks. Oh, I like that. That's good. I'll keep that uh, and click on the green tick. Okay, so uh, at the moment you can still see the original outline of the shape, but as soon as I exit the sketch, that'll be updated. Okay, but, but you and I know it's there. You know, it's okay. I'm looking at this as well, and the other thing I'm thinking is that this is quite tall actually. I'm tempted to drop the height down a little bit. So let's get back in here. I'm just going to turn my sketch fillet tool off, get back on my smart dimension tool, and I'm going to double click on here and bring that height down. I'm going to drop that down to, uh, let's go 25 and see how that looks. That's quite nice. I quite like 25. Uh, okay, that's good. And what else should I do? It'd be quite nice as well with the letter rack. You quite often have a little hole in the top so you can put your finger through it and pick it up and lift it out. So let's, let's have a little hole in there as well. So I'm going to use the circle tool and I'm going to draw a little circle in here. Okay, I'm placing it very roughly. I want it to be dead center when it's finished. But again, I'm just literally doing this to draw the circle. Uh, let's put some dimensions on that. To fully define this circle, I need to tell the computer what the diameter of the circle is. Uh, I'm looking at my finger at the moment while I'm talking. I reckon that as long as that hole's bigger than about 20 millimeters, no, maybe 15 millimeters, I could probably stick my little finger through it and pick it up. So I'm going to make that a 15 millimeter hole, like so. And, and also to get it fully defined, I need to tell the computer how far it is from the corner to just here and how far it is from the bottom to just here as well. And that'll allow me to fix it into position. So I'm going to click once on the origin point, once on the center of the circle. The computer's trying to give me a diagonal line at the moment, but if I move the mouse around eventually, there we go, it'll give me a nice uh, sort of you know neat horizontal line instead. So you see that, so I don't want that, but I do want that. So I'm gonna put that dimension down here. Uh, and if it's gonna be dead, dead, dead center, let's use our head a little bit, bit of a maths moment. So I've got 20, 20, 20, um, so overall this is 60 wide, isn't it? So halfway across would be 30, it'd be 30 millimeters. So 30, that's dead center now. It's still not fully defined. I need to say how far it is from the center of the circle. See that orange point, look, that's important. So I click once, and down to the bottom of the model. I could either use here or here, it doesn't matter. Um, I'll drop to this part. And then I'll say what that distance needs to be. And uh, again, let's have a think about this. <clears throat> the overall height is 25, so if I wanted it to be dead center, that would be 12.5, wouldn't it? 12.5 is probably quite nice, actually. Um, yeah, let's go 12.5. Uh, so I'm just going to delete all the stuff in there. 12.5, and OK. That puts it dead center, and I'm fully defined again. So we're looking good. Let's exit the sketch. Looking good. Not quite, quite nice little upright part there. That because we've modeled it all together in a moment when we come to clip all this together should fit together um, absolutely perfectly precisely. So my final step now for this part is going to be to save that so file, save as, into my H drive, into my SolidWorks folder, and I'm going to call that upright because that's what it is. You know, the last part was the base. This is an upright, and I'll click on save. And the computer will really think, and now that's done. So that's uh, allowed me to save that particular part. The final step is going to be to click all the parts together. It's probably the nicest part of SolidWorks. And, uh, and we'll look at that in the next tutorial.